I'm Gustav Pauli, I'm at the Florida Museum of Natural History and I am here to look at marine invertebrates. So we've been on island for um, overnight, so last evening we went out and got a bunch of things. And uh, what we have here is some of the things we brought in to identify, get a species list for the island. And what I'm looking at right now is a worm snail, it's this little guy here. And um, despite what it looks like, it's not a worm, although it's a mass of sort of loose spaghetti-like coils on the rock, it's actually a snail. And unlike typical snails, it doesn't have that classic snail look, because once it attaches to the rock, it can grow in any way it wants, and it grows in this worm-like fashion. While real, typical snails, not real snails, these are real snails too. And what is are, this? These are hermit crabs and, and, and whatnot here, but they're in snail shells. So we can, we got actually two IDs from this, because you can get the snail ID as well as the hermit crab ID. And there's another worm snail right there, so that's that's really typical. But um, so so they are a little more challenging because they don't have the classic shell characters because the shells are really loose. So what I'm trying to do is just to see if it has a certain kind of trapdoor, an operculum on its shell, and depending on the kind of trapdoor it has, it belongs in one or another genus, and that will help me narrow down who it is and hopefully figure it out. So is Bis is Biscayne Park a particularly diverse place for this kind of animal? Um. I have no idea. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you don't normally work here. I, so I haven't. I haven't done much in the Keys, so this is sort of new. And um, we found one species of it. There's looking at the Abbott's review of American seashells. There should be about uh, four or five species, maybe, in this area. So that's the first one. We were only in the tidal. We haven't dove yet, so we'll see. And what are the issues or problems that these animals face generally? Well, for this one is an interesting one because what we did is we went on the ocean side, and on the ocean side. Um, there's good exposure, a lot of sand scour, and they live on this, this rock, which is a Pleistocene reef. Uh, in the last interglacial period, uh, sea level was a little higher, and that's at the base of these islands, and set up a, a hard bottom. And now it forms a rocky intertidal here, which is actually fairly uncommon on the east coast. And so there's an intertidal fauna out there that's really cool. And these guys are part of that fauna, and because they live fairly high up, their biggest problem really is exposure. They are dealing with um, a lot of sun exposure, weather exposure, desiccation stress, and they have to put up with all that. So these guys will bake at 100 degrees part of the time and in the winter get as cold as it does and they are not buffered by the ocean because the water doesn't cover them and have that thermal uh, insulation that they would get otherwise. So so that's that's typical for intertidal animals, but that's the biggest stress it faces. Is it an probably. ancient animal that's on a Pleistocene rock? Does no, it rock, no, uh, no, 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 no. I mean, I know I it's mean, a modern living animal, but uh, <laughs> right, no, it's, it's, it's not. Form. It's not in a particularly ancient clade. I see. Uh, okay. I mean, you know, that's a that's a that's a convoluted question, but yeah. <laughs>